Thanks for joining me with Wilderness of the Monty. Today I'm going to be jig fishing. So this is barbless only. So the jigs that you use can have any scent. And I haven't actually tried, I try, I've only tried one of three of the types of jigs I'm using. I got these gets it, gets it style jigs, pinch the barbs off, single barbless. These have a heavier head. I find that the deeper you fish in this lake, the bigger the fish you catch. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be casting my jigs out, letting them sink beyond boulders, and then jigging them deep past the boulders and seeing if I can pick up fish. Then I have these are trout magnets. These work pretty good, but they're not very heavy and it's really windy today. So I'm going to see if I can't make these uh, lighter ones work. I'm not sure. I've never tried them before. And then I got another style from Gets It, and these aren't going to sink very fast, so I don't think this is a good choice for today. But we'll see. So those are the three types of jigs that I'm going to be using today. Um, so that's what it's going to be. I'm using four pound test, and I'm using a five foot rod, light action rod. Right, here we go. This is the area we want. We're gonna jig in some of these deep holes and see if we can't get something to come out. There's one. That's a nice golden right there. See what I'm doing is, it's windy. There he is. So what I'm doing is, oh, that's a nice 14 incher. What I'm doing is, I'm just dropping it in there. Look at that guy. He came right out from under that rock. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish right there. One more look at him. So what I'm doing is there are these holes in between the rocks and these big goldens will sit inside in these deep holes and I'm just jigging this down there and they come shooting out from under the rocks and he came right out and just nailed that and what you got to do is you want to find these dark holes see I'm having a hard time right now with that open water because of the wind but then I came right over here and I found this pattern so you got to find different patterns this is when jig fishing is impossible. I mean, look at this wind. It is just relentless. Oh! Okay, let's get moving. So I moved out over to lake four because five is just too windy to fish. I mean, it's it's got white caps. And I've switched to a smaller jig that's going to be hard to detect strikes, but those white jigs I started with were sinking too fast. And it didn't give the trout a chance to get it. So it's going to be hard to detect strikes, but I just really got to watch my line. And if I see any kind of movement on that line, I got to take a shot at it. And with this style of jig is called a trout magnet. It's a... Uh, this little guy here, and we'll see if it does any good. As you can see, the wind is pretty relentless. My experience here is the bigger fish are down deep. So it's worth it to really let your presentation sink. With this wind, I can't tell how deep I am <laughs> That's the catch 22. I haven't fished a lot in Lake 4. I usually just fish in Lake 5, but it's all about the conditions. Oh, there's one. See, he had that. It didn't even hit the bottom. Ooh, there he is. He's a nice, nice little golden there. There he is. Look at the colors on this boy. All right, it's gonna be kind of tough to land him here because I'm several feet above the water. 
give you one more look. That is a beautiful fish. Let's get it back in the water. There he goes. Swimming off strong. It's kind of tough to land fish here because I'm the water is about hmm, three feet below where I'm standing. So on that fish, he I didn't even know he was on the line. I was letting it sink down to the bottom, like I said that uh, a lot of the fish are down deep. I was letting that just sink down, and when I started reeling, he was on there. <laughs> so, so much for me being able to see the strike on my line. Because <laughs> this wind, if you can see, there's a big bow in my line, and it's just, it's really tough to fish a jig in these conditions. I know over and over I always say, oh, fish the shore. Uh, Cottonwood Lakes is a lake where I like to fish deeper. Just because I, I just find that I'll, there's, a, unless I'm fishing in cracks in the rocks, there's a lot of big fish down deep in this lake. So I'm really gonna let that trout magnet sink down in there because I wanna see if there's some deep fish. I don't know why jigs work so well in this lake. I don't know if that there's some kind of crustacean or something that the fish feed on in the deeper water. But I've, I've had a lot of success on a variety of jigs in this lake. And I'm not certain what they're feeding on naturally that makes jigs work so good because jigs don't always work at every lake you go in. You're going to go in some lakes where jigs just don't catch anything. <laughs> so just just be aware of that. Here's a nice windbreak. Let's see if we can get something in here. This is all the things I like. Boulders, no wind or little wind. That get down in there. There's one. Ooh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. That's a good 14, 15, 16 incher. Whoo! Now that is a golden trout right there. That is a 14 inch golden trout. Beautiful fish. What do you think about that? Let's get him back in the water. Woo! Swim away strong. All is good. Several times I've talked about making adjustments if uh, what you're using isn't working. And I know I discounted this heavier jig earlier and said it'd be better for boats or cocks. I'm gonna try to throw this out let it go all the way to the bottom, and then I'm gonna try to skip it along the bottom because I've never really done that. And I'm, and I'm seeing these fish are cruising right along the bottom. So I'm gonna try to do something that I've never really done here because I've never used a jig that's this heavy. So I'm gonna see if this works. And if this works, this could be my go-to for the next 10 years. That's how you figure stuff out when you fish. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna jig it and I'm just gonna swim it along the bottom. Now this might not work. <laughs> when, when you do a lot of experimenting, you do a lot of failing too. <laughs> so, so I'm just gonna see if I can't pick something up that's running deep. Because if, if, some, if they are feeding on something that's, that's scurrying along the bottom, this could, this could be the real answer. Oh, well, maybe they will like it. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> That's a nice golden. So what I was doing is I'm just letting that sink down deep. And you notice the fish I'm getting down deep are all nice fish. Get my hand wet. See that? So that's a nice golden. Beautiful fish. 
you know, it's like everything. Some, sometimes the fish will take it, sometimes they won't. Sometimes when you get the right color and you get the right motion, you can just catch one fish after another. I'm not having that luck with the jig selection I brought with me. There's one. There's some nice goldens in here, man. He's jumping. There's a nice golden for you. It's a good 13, 14 inch golden jig fishing it deep so if you want to get to this spot you got to break through that <laughs> that's where the jeans come in <laughs> you get scraped to death but sometimes these spots that are hard to get to hold nice fish there's one there's one oh he's nice he's running that's what I talk about. Lake Four is kicking him today. He's not as big as some of the others, but he's nice. Woo, stripping line. That's all you could ask for. Let's get this guy in here and see what he looks like. Oh, another nice golden. Let him go. Let her go. That's a girl. Judging by the thing. All of these fish are really strong. Uh, they're really healthy. So really quick, again, I'm just going to keep reiterating. I'm letting this heavier gets it jig sink down deep. And I'm going to show you up close what it looks like when I get it out. Because this is what I'm catching all these latest fish on. I'm, I'm trying this a new technique that I haven't used before where I'm letting it get all the way down to the bottom and then I'm just jigging it in and I'm bringing it up the shelf and it really seems to be paying dividends. I'm, I'm catching a lot of fish. I've caught several fish already using this technique. So this is what this jig looks like. It's got the lead head on it and it's got no scent. Once again, this is artificial barbless only, so you can't have any scent on your jig. And I'm just letting it get down deep in there, and then I'm and then I'm just jigging it back up along the bottom. And it's a little tough with this wind, but it's not impossible. So for those of you who've never been here, here's Lake Four where I just was fishing. Here's Lake Five. Now for the moment, the wind seems to be off of this bank in Lake 5, so I'm going to go run over here and try to make a couple quick casts and see if we can do some good. I mean, right now this is one of those situations where I'm just going wherever the wind isn't. <laughs> so, this wind just came up which ruins everything. When you see boulders out there, that's when you want to try to get your jig as close to the boulder as possible. You want to get it down deep and swim it by that dark dark hole because sometimes some really big fish will be sitting in those holes. Unfortunately 20 mile an hour gust just came up so it's going to make it a little difficult. But difficult's not impossible. Stopping for a second. Just give me a couple seconds. All I need is 
30 seconds. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> Not asking for a lot here. There's one. There's one. He hit it on the sink. I'm telling you, all you need is 30 seconds in between wind gusts. <laughs> See, these bigger fish are down deep. I'm telling you, you want to fish the deep water. And there's a lot of these nice goldens that are 14. That's a nice golden trout there, boy. Woo! Look at the colors on that. Let's get you back in the water. Swims away nice and strong. These fish are really healthy. Face a situation where you have this crazy wind like I'm dealing with here. If you can just wait a second for a pause in the wind and you can let your lure, like that fish hit my, my jig when it was sinking. I didn't even, I never even detected a bite. I just started reeling and the fish was on there. <laughs> so, you know, that's the, that's the thing. When the wind's up, it's really hard to see that bite when it's sinking, but because a lot of times that's when they're going to hit it. Sometimes I'll do a long rise up and let it sink. Sometimes I'll do a short pop and let it sink. Sometimes when I get it in uh, fishing deep water, I'll do a long rise and let it go down, reel it in, long rise and let it go down, reel it in, because right here, I'm standing over a really deep shelf. And then what I also like to do is swim my jig right along the bottom of the rock that I'm standing on, because sometimes goldens will come out from in there. So watch what I do on this cast. I'm gonna cast it way out there. I'm gonna let it sink. I'm gonna let it get nice and deep out there. I'm trying to watch my line as best I can to see if I see any quick juts or bites or anything. Now because this water is so deep, and because I have such a deep shelf right here, it allows me to do a long pull and then I'm gonna let it sink back down. And you wanna keep your rod where you can set the hook. Let it sink back down. Long rise, let it sink back down. And we'll see if anything's lurking down in that deep water. Long rise, let it sink back down. And that right there is an example of nothing. <laughs> so here I'm gonna do more of a parallel cast because there's a rock shelf right there. I don't know if you can see it. And what I wanna do is bring my jig along this deep rock shelf and see if anything's lurking or cruising along that rock shelf. This is really good water here in Lake Five and the wind's not horribly bad. And I'm gonna do that long, I'm doing that longer. This one I'm gonna do a little bit more of a popping action where I do short just because the wind is, I gotta keep contact because the wind is not cooperating at all. This is a nice spot because I can cast out. Ah, shucks. All right. I can cast it out there and you can do a fan pattern because you have this deep water. Now this jig I'm using isn't the kind of jig I really like to use because it sinks so fast, but it's just the wind. It's the only option. <laughs> Often, the person that learns to watch the line will catch more fish than a person that only relies on feeling the bite. <sighs> Getting a couple on these jigs, but it's just, uh... It's a little tough with this wind, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna stick with it, see what we can get. Ugh. Ooh, that's a fat golden. Ugh. That barbless hook slips right out. There he is. It's a good fish. Let him go. 